My name is Nassim Sabs. Let me ask you a question. Has anything ever happened to you that you couldn't explain? That made you feel sort of foolish when you tried to tell somebody about it? Well, if it has, you have plenty of company, as you'll soon see. Go ahead and tell them about... Um about your testimony, remembering uh, your your being given the opportunity of choosing to come here to help. Well, I won't go into too much detail. I just wanted to mention that there are a lot of us here on Earth that remember being in the heavenlies and planning to come here to the Earth for this exact time period. I remember God being very excited about this time, and that He did not send His weak people, or weak messengers. I kind of look at this as sort of like paratroopers being dropped off into a war zone. It is war. You've been briefed before you were sent here. Some people are kind of hazy. They're starting to wake up. They're starting to realize that they're here for a reason. Some people have known this all of their lives. That they are different. That they are here for a reason. And many do not know exactly what it is. Nor do most have any memories of the heavenlies. But some do. I believe that a lot of these people are going to start remembering some of it, but it's like, it's like instincts within them. These inner instincts have driven them their entire lives, almost always against the mainstream. It could be, everybody in their lives questioning them and saying what you doing this for? Why are you going in that direction? It may appear stupid to others on why we have gone a certain direction in our lives. Well we know why we are going in a direction. We may not know all the specifics, but we know deep in our spirits that that is what we are supposed to do. So, back to people who have been sent here. The Holy God has put his people in positions all over this earth, and he has his plan and he is very excited about it. What the Colonel was talking about just reminded me of this. Greg must be a very very strong person. Is he a son of God? I don't really know what the definition of a son of God is, whether it's just a strong spiritual being. Like a warrior, God does not send his people into enemy territory, into the most dangerous zones without them being strong warriors and soldiers, and able to come out of it. What God has shown me, is that when someone comes in, it is like a mission, it isn't just the person, there are other angels that come in with the person to help with the mission to be accomplished, it is like a special operations group or special ops group, so for every person that is going through this, there are angelic hosts that have helped pull that person through things, and even helped to keep them sane. A lot of people want to know how I am sane. It has been with a lot of help. God himself has even jumped in and pulled me out of some very difficult situations. And God has divinely given me direction and guidance and wisdom. People have shown up and helped me. Angels that have appeared have saved me. And many times I thought these angels were human but they were actually angels. And that has been the standard for a lot of people that are sent here for this time period. Think about Greg. He didn't have the luxury of disassociating. So to go through what Greg has gone through he must be a very very strong spiritual warrior. And that's the point I wanted to make. Well you know what makes me really strong and Paul probably attests to this? Believe it or not is my kindness. Uh... I have deep compassion for people, and it's hard to fight against something, somebody like that. And I, I feel sorry for people, and prior to this, so that you know, I was in combat for five years. I spent five whole years in combat, and I'm alive. And I was a sniper, but I was also involved in many firefights. In my unit name, and this is between us, this part, and we were put together, believe it or not, in the 80s for the Gulf War, because they knew it was just a matter of time. And our job was to go behind enemy lines before they started dropping any bombs two to four weeks before.
and plan ourselves, and we were there to rescue down pilots that were shot in the heat of battle. And we were there to rescue POWs, and that's what we did. And so they sent me to South America to keep me busy um, under the Ronald Reagan administration, and I spent years in combat. I was battlefield commissioned. All I was was a sergeant. As a matter of fact, when I first went into the military, I was in the Air Force, and I was an airplane mechanic. And they kicked me out for smoking pot. And so they sent me to um, confinement, hard labor for six, uh, 16 months. And I went and did that. Then when I came out, I was approached by the CIA to go to the state penitentiary for pay for two years to... But I was so callous from the war that once he told me what he did to the children... Because I just not geared that way. You, you, you don't do that to children. And so from there, I was just telling Paul, and I won't go into it, but I had gotten a job uh, working at the underground facility, and I was actually exactly what they were looking for, somebody that was, you got to be able to pull the trigger. You just can't go into a war and run. If you don't pull the trigger and fight back, you're going to die. And I was very good in not caring who was in my way. If they were evil or they were no good, I was going to kill them if they were in my way. Anybody that got in my way died. And so I, I ran around when I got out. And what's bad is is that when you get out of a situation like that, it's like one day you're in the heat of combat, and the next day you're at home in perfect calm, and you don't un you don't understand how to take it. And so, I drank and used drugs for years after that because of it. And I'm getting to the part where God saved me, and so I got this job underground. And still, I, I was convinced that there was something, uh, if there was absolute evil, there had to be a balance of absolute truth and goodness. And so when I, when I went down there, I, I seen absolute evil, and I still wasn't convinced when I came up. So, you know, like I say, we fell on our faces, and we were crying out for the truth. We just didn't know what direction to go into. I mean, I, I went into the penitentiary. For two years, I, I've spent five years in combat, and now I'm in the underground base seeing something that's just, like Paul said one day, if you understand it, there's no explanation necessary, but if you don't, there's none possible. And so I couldn't talk to my family about it. Who was I going to tell, tell about this that wouldn't think, that wouldn't put me in an institution right away? So I went over a decade without saying one word about it, ever, not to nobody. And one day, I was ready to just blow my brains out. I was ready to quit. I, you know, life wasn't any good. And I was a smart person. Um, I made. Uh, I worked in different jobs and held high executive uh, jobs because of my leadership ability. And so I was making six figures a year. But at the end of the day, excuse my French, I didn't have a pot to piss in because I drank it all and partied it all away. And I just thought, if this is all there is to it, even if I'm poor, I'm sad. If I'm rich, I'm even sadder. So I'm just going to blow my brains out. And so I got real drunk one day and started getting ready to do it. And I just felt this sense of total calm and understanding that my dad went through it in Korea, and I'm just another one that was run through it, and why not me? And so I, when I was going up to people, they were used to getting ready. You know, I, I was... a and a brawler, I'd fight anybody or anything just to 
because I had so much anger built up inside. And so after that night, I still didn't understand that it was God, but I, I noticed that my attitude was changing and that instead of fighting, I was getting more and more compassionate, and it was just not me. And my mother even noticed it and said, Greg, you've changed so much. You're just so kind. And the kinder I got, the more I got attacked, but the more I won without even firing a shot or swinging. And then my mother had instilled in me years ago as a child, she was been a Christian all her life, her and my aunt. And, um, that seed that she planted in me started to flourish, and then I started to know, I started to be still and know that he is God. Greg, um, both you and have both encountered Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to go into it, um, but your mother encountered Christ in your room when you were a small child, and then later, uh, as an adult, Jesus walked up to you uh, at the lean-to, if you recall, and, and, and other times. And I recall also mentioning that, that she's encountered Jesus Christ. And, and I just want to keep emphasizing that Jesus Christ is what everything is all about. And I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah, it's what, that's, it's what Jesus Christ did for me. And, you know, people go to church and born again and all this other stuff. But I just, myself, with all the anger and violence that I'd seen in my life, I, I just thought that that's just what the world was, and that if I was going to survive in it, I was going to have to be angry and violent towards everybody. And it always made things worse. I, the cops were afraid of me. I remember an instance one time, and I'm not a big guy, where the took four cops to get me down, and I done took the guns off the two of them and threw them in the river. It took four cops to get me down. And one of the cops was a Christian and told me, he said, boy, if you would just take that same energy and put it towards God, you'd be a heck of a guy. Because he, I took the guns and, and he knew that I could have shot him, but I didn't. I threw the guns in the water. I was just wanting to fight. And so when Jesus came to my heart, it was just a mind-blowing experience for me. It just absolutely just was mind-blowing and I was in a room um, I wasn't married then and I was in a room and, and I backslid after this but I was in a room and this might sound like a fable but it's not the windows were open and it was real calm at night and I was just laying in my bed and, and this wind came through the room and it just blew the curtains and this wind out of nowhere. And I looked at the window and the trees weren't moving, but yet this wind was blowing all over me. And right away, I understood who God was, and I got on my knees and asked him to come into my life. Since then, I backslid a couple of times, but I've been able to get myself up. Now, I'm older, I'm 55, and God has put so many people in my life, like Paul and you, and just so many people that now I know that that I was put, like you said, into the middle of combat. All these years was training. That's all it was, was training for what's coming up. And I'm not afraid anymore of man. All he can do is take my flesh. He, can, he can't have my soul. My soul has already been bought and paid for. And so now when I come across these entities, and I've had the devil himself come to me. I own a welding shop, and I've had the devil himself come to me and try to get me to step outside the shop and gave me all kinds of delusions. And I just made a choice to resist him, and he left. And I thought, Man, all I got to do is just not listen to him. Just not listen to him. 
and all those entities, it, it all just started coming together. And what really brought it together was an interview I heard the other day brought more.